Here goes another one. Where are they going to get those steel shutters out? Useless bastards. Stand over there, please. Just face front, please. Surname? Rabia. Rabia? See. Oh, Christian name? Face your right, please. Antonio. Professor Antonio Rabia, comma. I thought you said Rabia. See. Si. Quiet. This isn't the first time you've been up for impersonation, is it, Professor Comma? Rabia. I thought you said Comma. May I wash my inky fingers now, please? Scattery! Scattery! Justizia Pinelli! Parci, assassini! Justizia Pinelli! Figliati! Parci! Parci! The complaint states that you falsely assume the identity of a professor of psychiatry and former don from the University of Padua. That is fraud. Fraud when committed by a sane man, yes indeed, but I am a lunatic. I see. A certified psychotic. Here's my medical records. Committed 16 times, same thing every time. Histrionic mania. From the Latin, you know. Histriones. To act the part of. My hobby, you see, acting. <laughs> That's why I have to have an audience. Buongiorno, eh? Tutto bene! Hello, I'm Inspector Francesco Giovanni Bertozzo of the Security Police. This is the second floor of our notorious headquarters here in the center of Milano. <laughs> notorious following a sordid little incident which happened here a few days ago when an anarchist under interrogation on one of the upper floors fell through the window. See you later. Any time. Yeah, There you go. While my colleagues claim quite reasonably the anarchist had committed suicide, yesterday the verdict of the coroner's court was that the anarchist's death was accidental. Not satisfactory, you see. Now we've got demonstrations outside, accusations in the press and so on. Not the best atmosphere in which a plain old nine-to-fiver like me can carry on a routine day's work. <laughs> According to this complaint, as this psychiatrist, you were charging your clients 200,000 lira a visit. It's a question of credibility, any less they think I was no good. A beginner or something, even Freud. Ah, oh, Sigmund. <laughs> even Freud said a fat bill is the most effective panacea, especially for the doctor. A pity. A pity your client filed a complaint, wasn't it? Bring him along. <laughs> I ought to warn you that the authors of this sick little television programme have the traditional irrational hatred of the police common to all narrow-minded left-wingers. So we shall, no doubt, be the unwilling butt of endless anti-authoritarian jibes. Please bear with us. <laughs> this is your visiting card, is it not? Si. Professor Antonio Rabi, a psychiatrist. Formerly lecturer at the University of Padua. Are you Antonio Rabia? <laughs> Not exactly. What does that mean? I am a professor. You are, eh? Yes, of design, decoration and freehand drawing at the College of the Sacred Redeemer. I take evening classes. It says here, psychiatrist. After the comma. Yes. Before the full stop. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what? Professor Antonio Rabia, comma, capital P, psychiatrist, full stop. I take it you are familiar with the basic rules of syntax and punctuation. Where's the fraud? Formerly lecturer at the University of Padua. True or false? After the formerly? What? There's another comma. Can't you even read? <laughs> You're mad. I know. What have all these commas got to do with it? Well, nothing to someone with your rudimentary education. Evidently, Inspector... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me explain. You see, the punctuation changes the whole emphasis of the sentence. After the comma, the reader, uh, your good self, takes a short mental breath, thus changing the intentionality. So the sentence should read... Professor Antonio Rabia, comma, capital P, psychiatrist, full stop, formerly, comma, 
lecturer at the University of Padua. Full stop. You see, you read correctly on your arsehole swallow that one. I'm an arsehole, am I? No, no, your grammar's a bit retarded, that's all. I could give you a refresher course. Let's begin by repeating all personal pronouns in Italian. Io sono tu sei loro sono le eh? Eh? Very good. <laughs> you too, Franco, no shirking. May we? No, that's French. <laughs> May we get on with this fucking statement? Ooh, is he getting away with that? What? Yes. Oh, get on with it. That's Pete viewing out the window. Stay tuned, viewers. God knows what'll slip out next. Get the cuffs on! Ah, no, no, no. Straight jacket or nothing. Article 122 of the Penal Code states, imposition of non-clinical instruments of restraint by law enforcement officers upon disturbed persons is forbidden on pain of instant dismissal and loss of pension. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> law student as well now, eh? Stu. Studied court procedure in the loony bin, no doubt. A paranoid registrar gave lectures three mornings a week. Roman law, modern law, Dennis law, test me. Don't be fooled, Constable. This raving is a conscious effort to confuse us and avoid prosecution. Not at all. Bit of a lawyer, eh? No lawyers amongst your past personas. Not even a barrister. Well, who wants to be a barrister? I don't want to be passive. I don't want to defend. I'm like you, Inspector. I like to accuse, convict, judge, and pass sentence. <laughs> Never actually impersonated a judge, have you? Just for the record? Unfortunately, no. That opportunity hasn't arisen so far. Shame, eh? Hey? It is, isn't it? I'd love to do a judge. Oh, yes. You see, the thing about judges, Inspector, is they never retire. That's the beauty of it. Your ordinary humdrum sons and daughters of toil, they hit 60, they slow down, don't they? They get sloppy, sluggish, whoops onto the scrap heap at that very same moment. But your average magistrate is blossoming into a high court judge. Oh, really? Silence in court. Take part of my lad. See what I mean? <laughs> Take your lave, operator. Touch of the shakes, couple of minor accidents, out to grass, coal miner, bit of silicosis, finito at 50. Housewife, there's a job. She never retires either, but the older she grows, the more she does, the less she gets, she ends up with nothing. But the older and the frailer and the feebler the judges get, the more they are elevated to superior and powerful positions. That's the job for me. 20 years for you, 30 years for you, living on Railton Road, 50 years. <laughs> Rape! Victim can't testify, case dismissed. Hands off or I'll bite. What? In the arse. Can't control it. And I've got rabies. <laughs> yes, caught it off a dog. Rabid bastard took a lump out of me right here. Right here? No, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Crack splat down the banisters, two deaths in custody in a month. Could your PR department handle that? I don't care, nobody has ever done this to me before. Nobody, you think you're putty? Put your fucking head under a bus. You didn't hear that. I can help you make subversives talk. Slash your lips. I know how to injure without visible signs. Do what you like, I don't care. I know how to make nitroglycerine suppository. Oh! 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 Thank God for that. Let's hope we don't get another one in like that again. What time is it, Constable? You're going to be about half an hour late for that appointment with the bomb squad, sir. Why didn't you tell me? Well, you were otherwise engaged, weren't you? <laughs> don't be cheeky. <laughs> We're only doing our jobs. We're only doing our jobs. Right. Oh, wait a 
got here? Oh, yes. <laughs> Paolo Tiberti, age 24, deaf mute, charged, refusing to answer questions. <laughs> Nobody move. Justice has just arrived. <clears throat> You're free. One more. Free. One more. You're absolutely free. Well, I'm good. I've been framed. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't get worse. Yeah. Oh, what have we got here? A big fish. Pesci grossi. See? It's Italian. For the camera. <laughs> Diamond smugglers, drug racketeers, they can all stay there. Where are the little people? The popolo piccoli. Popolo piccolo, popolo piccolo, po popolo piccolo, eh? That's more like it. Okay. Here we go. Heads! <laughs> Sorry, Padre! <laughs> Hello, Inspector Potato's office. Whom do I have the honor of addressing? Who the hell's that? Ha no, no, you tell me who you are, then I might hand you over to him. Inspector Pizzani. Who? Pizzani. Oh, how delightful. Uh, Potato, it's that famous humanitarian, Inspector Pizzani, from upstairs. <laughs> now, what can we uh, do for you? Yes? Uh, hold on a moment. Uh, Potato, he says you've got the file on the flying anarchist, he wants it back. <laughs> Uh, yes, go on. The, oh, the public outcry. Can't miss it, can you? Quite a ha-hoo. Uh, sorry, hoo-ha. Little blood clot. Yeah. <laughs> then what? They're sending a high court judge down here to interview you and the superintendent and make a detailed investigation of all the evidence. Ooh, uh, just a moment. My hour has come. <clears throat> all right, what's this chap's name, Pizzani? Marco Malapiero. Marco Malapiero, yes. Marco Malapiero. First councillor to the High Court. Oh, my, you are being honoured, aren't you, eh? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I've got the file here. Your testimonies, you and this uh, superintendent. Verbatim reports of the uh, torture and interrogation. Sorry, slip of the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Patozzi. He's having a fit, I tell you. <laughs> He's all creased up. <laughs> he can't control him that way. He says it's the idea of you two sadists up there up to your chins in your own shit. <laughs> now, don't get touchy. <laughs> Ooh, that was Patozzi blowing your raspberry. Uh, what? He says he'll bash your face in at the earliest opportunity, Patozzi. You and whose army? <laughs> Heil Himmler. <laughs> last, a judge, a dream come true. You must excuse me. I'm feeling grotesquely emotional. <laughs> These chances come but once in a lifetime. If I can just convince them that I'm this Marco Malapiero character. I must be careful not to make a bloody balls up of this one. <laughs> no, no business like show business there's no business I know. Hello, buongiorno. <laughs> right, let's see. What shall we do? Clear the decks, shall we? Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, right. How's this for starters? <clears throat> I sentence you to death. <laughs> huh? OK, I'll warm it up for you. Hold on. All right, let's see what we've got here. Ah, yes, the human adventure is only just beginning. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll take it seriously from now on. <laughs> yes, I am using the Stanislavski approach here. Now, into the characterization I crawl. How's that? <laughs> right, now let's see what it looks like, shall we? Not bad. How's it look from the back? Oh. Oh. Uh, it's not right, is it? All right, I'll get on with it. <laughs> judges, judges, justice, judges. The old grey hairs, the old sage. That's the idea. Oh! <coughs> <coughs> Come here, come here, come here. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. I have to work with this, you know. I do. This is commercial television in crisis, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is. You don't wear rubbish like this when you work at the National Theatre, you know. Don't come to think of it, you don't wear anything at all down there. Uh, <laughs> look, yeah. How does it look? I sentence you to death, Kermie. <laughs> Let's see what we can do with this, shall we? Just have a look here. Ah, yes. Lord Denning to the life. <laughs> 
That's what you get for spending all those years at the bar. <laughs> oh, I told you we had some lousy ones, didn't I? I've warned you. Come on, what do you think? Is it awful? Is it, is it rubbish? Yeah. Uh, there we go, you see. Is it shit? Yeah. Let me hear it. Go on. One, two, three, it's, it's shit! Oh, you wonderful people! <laughs> on the telly in front of millions. <laughs> OK, right, now, but what can we do with this? A change of style. Ah, the very thing. Okay. <laughs> as soon as you... No, don't bother. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. OK, culture vultures, you ask for this. Marcello Mastroianni. <laughs> Charm, you see. Bicycle clips. <laughs> uh, what does he do? 30 years for you, 40 years for you. What does he do at the weekends? Open air type, landowner, hates the peasants. <laughs> Shots off. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Shots off. Add a little drink. Cheers. <coughs> Pardon. Shots out, yeah. Cheers. <coughs> Pump. Shots out. Cheers. <coughs> Pump. Ooh. That's how he got the bad eye. Hunting accident. Here we go. Another little prop. Bang it in and I'll busk the rest, eh? <laughs> oh, my God. Get off. Get off. Keep acting. I haven't finished yet, you big lump. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, dearie me. Can't they cut that bit? All right. OK. Here we go. OK. Ah, it's you. That's my line. I'm just reminding you. Ah, it's you. I don't get neurotic. Out of my office. I have valuable information for you. There's this fellow running about, says he's going to bash your face in. What? Thank God I've warned you in time. He's fuming. Who? That fascist superintendent's friend from upstairs. Inspector Pizzani? The very man. He's after you and no mistake. Get out. This is all blubber. You want my advice? You come across him. Quack, quack. Duck? Exactly. It's your only hope. Get out! <laughs> Dear Pisani, I was just talking about you. Some bloody loony in on an impersonation charge was just telling me that. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Pisani. Sorry, Pisani. Sorry, Pisani. Sorry, Pisani. Hurt your hand? No. Why are you rubbing it, then? Do I know you? I don't believe so. Oh, I knew a bishop once who rubbed himself like that. A Jesuit, of course. Your face rings a bell. Fifth. Oh. Where were we? Ah, yes, this continuous massaging, obviously a symptom of insecurity, problems with mama in your formative years. You should screw more, Inspector. Unleash yourself. No! Oh, what are you doing in my office? You again! Oh, can't they afford enough bloody actors? Do do I have the... you mind? Who's producing this show? Ian McGregor. To whom do I have the dubious pleasure of speaking? Very good. I am Marco Malapiero, first counsellor to the High Court. Sure! I got the judge. Formerly a lecturer at the oh. University of Rome, with two commas and a full stop in the normal way. We weren't expecting you quite so soon, Your Honor. Decided to catch him on the hop. Oh. Ah! Oh. 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 Put you out, no, oh. not at all, thank you. Let me take the coat, sir. Certainly, you might as well. It's not mine. Anyway. <laughs> Would you like to call the superintendent? Uh, I'd like to begin straight away. Uh, perhaps you'd like to go to his office, sir? More comfortable in there. Ah, but isn't this the room where the beastly business with the anarchist took place? Yes. yes. In, in here. here. <laughs> well then, I ask the superintendent to step in here as quickly as possible if he can. Even if he can't. Yes, even if he can't. Yes, sir. I'll just give that bastard Batot so I call her to bring up the file. No doubt you'll want a transcript of the interrogation. No, 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 no. That won't be necessary, Inspector. I have everything I need right here. Excuse me, sir, but Inspector. Uh, Inspector Bissani wants to see you, sir. Yes, uh, 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 it says, even if you can't, sir. Who's a funny man, eh? Oh, my brother. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I've got in there? Hmm? 
No. Only bloody Bruno. Oh. The Olivetti kidnapper. Only about to crack him, wasn't I? And you send your clod hopping lackey stomping in there and screw everything up completely. Then I passed poor Obertotto a while back on his way to the medical room with a face like some inflatable fruit and learned that you thumped him. Well, he blew a raspberry at me. Raspberry? Yeah. Looked more like a prize marrow to me. What did you use? A fucking flagpole? <laughs> a fine time to start cracking up. Perhaps you don't realize this, but there are eyes watching us, press hounds snapping at our heels, waiting for us to slip up just once so they can... <laughs> once! I share your anxieties, Superintendent. <gasps> what the blazes is this? I have had cause myself to severely reprimand this young associate of yours. It appears to me to be somewhat repressed. Oh, yes. <laughs> Who is this dribbling cretin? Marco Malipiero. What? First counselor to the High Court. We were expecting you, Your Honor, but not so soon. Caught you with your pants down, eh? <laughs> My God, Superintendent. It's your face. Come here. It's as if years ago, Calabria. Calabria? It is forth from the sterilizing chain. Lost an instrument of steel. <laughs> Giovinezza, Giovinezza, primavera di bellezza. I think we'd better keep this between ourselves, don't you? Right, gentlemen, if you'd like to uh, pay attention, please. Do take a seat, Superintendent. Let's get down to facts. Right, according to the evidence of the transcript, here we are. An anarchist by professional railway worker found himself under interrogation in this very room on the subject of bombs planted in railway carriages at the Milano Centrale Stazione and, more recently, the notorious attack at the Banco di Agricultura, which caused the deaths of some 17 innocent persons. <laughs> Now, think carefully, Superintendent. In the report here, it states that you had said there were heavy suspicions pointing in his direction. Did you say that? Yes, sir. Uh, in the beginning, but later I well, said Well, the beginning is a pretty good place to start, wouldn't you agree? Certainly. Super duper, super. <laughs> yes, right. Towards midnight, the anarchist seized by a raptus. And this is still you speaking here, Superintendent. Uh -huh. Seized by a raptus, threw himself out of the window, thus ending his life upon the pavement below, right? Right, right. exactly right. right. Okay, then. So, what is a raptus? No, that is a disaster. A raptus <laughs> is a crisis of suicidal anguish exhibited by a sane person when provoked by a violent anxiety, right? Right. right. Then let us see what provoked this violent anxiety. We shall begin by reconstructing the exact events beginning with your entrance, Superintendent. My entrance? Yes, don't you want to act out your notorious entrance? Oh, that notorious entrance. Well, the one that caused this bloody raptus. I didn't make an entrance. It was a junior of mine. Oh, pretty feeble to pass the buck onto one's inferiors, you know, Superintendent. Well, it's just one of those devices we employ in the force, sir. Make the suspect confess. And who asked your opinion? No one. I agree. Speak when you're spoken to. Certainly. Superintendent. It was more or less like this, Your Honor. The suspect, the anarchist, was sitting here. Splendid. I'll play the anarchist. My then. colleague. Yes. I mean, I. Yes. Enter. Jolly good. Off you go, then. What? Enter. Enter. Try the door. It's no use trying to pull the wool over my eyes, Sonny. <laughs> That's not what I've got written here. This is a documentary reconstruction, Superintendent. I want the exact words in the exact manner. Now, do try again. Ah, right there! You filthy, posh ridden pansy! You pissed me about no, one more... No, it was pissed me about. You're sure of that, right? I think so. Oh, yeah. jolly good, carry on. Ah, ah. We have incontrovertible proof that you're the murdering cult who planted the bombs in the railway station. You had this proof, I assume. Of course not. Oh, dear. That's what the inspector was trying to say before, just one of those little deceptions we're occasionally obliged to resort to. I see a trap. Exactly. Oh, brilliant. Now, we had our suspicions, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a start, the suspect was the only anarchist railway worker in Milan. So it was simple to deduce that it was him. Well, of course, of course, it's uh, self-evident, isn't it? Mm. So, I mean, as it was undoubtedly the case that a railway worker must have planted the bombs in the railway station. 
then we can also assert that the famous bombs at the law courts must have been planted there by a lawyer. And the bomb at the agricultural bank, either by a bank clerk or a cow, whichever takes your fancy. And the famous bomb at the tomb of the unknown soldier, undoubtedly perpetrated by a corpse. Absolutely. Come along now, gentlemen. I'm here to conduct a serious inquiry, not fart about with syllogistic prattling. Let's get on with it. It says here, unaffected by the accusations, the suspect smiled disbelievingly. Who made this statement? Oh, oh yes, I did, sir. Jolly good. So there he is, smiling disbelievingly. And two lines later, I read, no doubt, fear of getting the sack played a part in precipitating the raptors. Hmm, let's get this straight. First he's smiling, then he's getting the sack, so he shits himself and dives out the window. Uh, no, 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 Come on, cops the whole world over, play a few dirty tricks. That's what you're paid for. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> so don't play Lily White with me. Well, actually, sir, I'd just gone out. But you came back in. Right, drama, drama. Let's get on with it. Excuse me, sir. Ah, uh, yes, Constable? It was at this point, sir, that we employed the... There is a phone call for you. Your secretary has it. It's very important, sir. Ploy. Fascinating, Constable. I wonder if you'll be kind enough to uh, demonstrate. In my pleasure, sir. I expect it would. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Mm. Excuse me, sir. There is a very important phone call. Your secretary has it. It's very important, sir. Oh. Excuse me, gentlemen. Brilliant. I haven't got a secretary. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I see. I've just had a phone call from Rome, your friend. I've just had a phone call from Rome, your friend. Your... Oh, yes. I've just had a phone call from Rome. Your friend, your friend. From Come on, go along with it! Yum, yum, your friend. Ah, now this is his friend from the anarchist group in Rome. That's the one, sir. Your friend or other partner. <laughs> Clever. Yes. Yeah. Your friend has confessed to planting a bomb in that bank in Rome. Another bomb? How did the suspect take that? Well, very badly, sir. Yeah. He turned pale, then he asked for a cigarette, and, and then he lit, lit it, it, and then he jumped. No, not immediately. <laughs> oh, that's what you told the coroner. Oh, well. Then later on, you said he looked cornered. Why was that? His alibi had collapsed. So he didn't jump straight away. No. His alibi had collapsed. Yes. When? After he lit the cigarette. I see. You see, he said he spent the afternoon in a bar in Navillion. Uh, witnesses? Hundreds of them. But you didn't believe why should I? <laughs> Indeed, as you told the coroner, the fact that he jumped was played admission of guilt. Absolutely. Then later on, of course, you said uh, we had no proof at all against the poor chap. And on I television, wouldn't... Inspector, you said, I can't understand it. We're all having a jolly good laugh, and he suddenly jumped out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Things got a bit out of hand. I should say, you arrest a free citizen, you hold him beyond the legal time limit, you traumatize him by telling him you have absolute proof he's a bomber, which you later state you didn't have at all. You then tell him you'll make sure he gets the sack, and then in spite of hundreds of witnesses who saw him in a bar, you tell him his alibi has collapsed, and you round the whole deal off with the coup de grace to tell him his friend has confessed to a filthy massacre in Rome, had he? Who? His friend. What? Confessed to the massacre in Rome. No! No! We invented it. Oh, what imaginations. I will be perfectly frank, gentlemen. You two are done for. You will be charged forthwith with instigating this man to commit suicide. What? That is true. But, Your Honor, you have to yourself. What? Our job is to interrogate suspects. What? And we might be required to use a few intimidating tactics. What? what? Shut up. Do you mind? We are dealing what? with a campaign Shut up. of... Shut up! We are dealing with a campaign of sustained psychological violence. Followed by a public exhibition of outrageous and contradictory lies. We weren't even in the room when the suicide took place. Ask the constable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yes, sir, they'd, uh, they both uh, left the room before he threw himself out. Exactly. Well said, constable. Well, where does it say that? It doesn't. Oh. No, no, because that's the first version, sir. Uh -huh. The constable's referring to the second version. The what? Second version. Second version. <laughs> what, what second version do you want, sir? That one. Uh, no! Oh, no. Where's the first second version? With the second second version. How many second versions are there? Six. Six. Yeah. There. 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 Oh, yes, of course. Yes, of course. There we are, sir. The second version. So there's been a little rewriting of events, has there? Slight correction. We corrected the time of the original interrogation in which we implied the, the lies. The deception strategy. The session ended at eight instead of midnight, as previously stated. So you brought everything forward for us? All except the fall from the window. Uh, there were witnesses to that. Uh, 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 excuse me, sir. I uh, see this uh, just there. After an initial period of depression, the anarchist was cheering up. 
He didn't give a damn about his friend in Rome. He despised him. So your lies meant nothing to him? Exactly. So why did you tell them to him? <laughs> well, it shook him. <laughs> and in no time at all, he was wreathed in smiles. Yes. Yes, he was serene. So why did he jump? Hey, What will we do? Are we doomed? Advise us. Why the hell do you think I've been sent here, Superintendent? The government has to make some form of gesture in order to salvage what remains of the mangled reputation of its police force. What? The Minister of Internal Affairs has decided that unless you two can come up with a miracle, you will be made the severest possible examples of. They can't mean to feed us to the wolves. I've sacrificed my life for this country. I don't give a tinker's fart about your boring bloody sacrifice. This is politics. But we were only following orders. Provoke the kind of atmosphere in which we can justifiably demand greater repressive powers, said the politicians, right? It's a very persuasive argument. The subhuman filth are threatening to engulf our beloved country. Society is falling apart. Action must be taken. Strengthen the state. Crack down on hooligans, drop out, strike out its squatters, demonstrators infiltrate the union militants, round up the activists, fatten up the files, polish your rubber bullets, and suddenly it's all got out of hand. Somebody's dead. Outcry. And the public want heads. And the state, the state had better provide or go under. Your heads, you soppy suckers. Who wanted my advice? Yes. Out! What? The pair of you. No! Your careers are ruined, your children will spit as you pass. It's not fair. Fair tradesmen won't serve you, you won't get an American Express car. You are abandoned, lost. This is monstrous. Your own ridiculous lies have condemned you, Pizzano. I warned you, didn't I? I said leave the script writing to the film directors, but no, you had to blab your nonsense to the world. Can't you feel the humiliation? Jump, you dishonorable world. I won't, it's not fair. There's the only decent thing left. Follow your victim into oblivion. He's right. I can't bear the disgrace. Familia, pardon me. No, 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 there must be another way. Can't you feel that breath just boiling up inside you? One great liberating leap. I've got it. Don't panic. I've got it. If I want to panic, I'll panic. I'm going. Yeah! A third person. What? We'll just have to do a third version. Haven't we made enough mess of the first two? We'll need your help, Your Honor, the benefit of your keen legal insight, and we'll produce a foolproof statement. Rubbish! Mm. Please! Very well, one last. Ah! Get back in here, Inspector. Are you going to or not? I suppose Get back in here, then. Right, on with the dance. Let's shut the shite house door on all this, as they say, and start all over again. Superintendent. Point, point one. Yes. What's said cannot be unsaid. Good. Never it stands, Inspector, that you or I, or uh, someone acting on our behalf, now, played a little deception. The suspect smoked his last cigarette, but did not jump because it was 8 o'clock and not midnight, and everyone knows that railway workers have a great respect for timetables, which gives us all the time in the world to calm him down, iron out all the wrinkles, and give him a convincing motive for jumping. Uh, I know. Uh, you could say that the state of depression into which he had fallen had moved you. Moved. Constable? Sir, were you moved? Moved, I was moved. We were all moved. I, I wasn't moved. You see, I wasn't here. Yes, you were. I was. Well, uh, he's smiling serenely. Why am I moved? He smiles because he sees we are moved. That's not bad. It's all right. It's good. It's not good enough. I gave him some chewing gum, sir. Brilliant. He starts to chew. Then he smiles. He likes juicy fruit. And I go out shaking my head. Dad, You're still here. I am. Mm -hmm. Nice try, Superintendent, but you were sorry for having upset him. I felt a certain regret, yes. And you couldn't resist putting uh, a hand upon his shoulder. I don't remember that. Fatherly gesture, wasn't it, Constable? It was, yes, yeah, I saw that. Yes, there you are, he saw it. Well, if he says so. Well, he just oh. did say so, didn't you, Constable? Yeah. There you are. Oh, yes, I did. Of course he did. Just a moment. Inspector, you gave his cheeks a gentle pat. Oh, I don't think I did. Oh, yes, you did. Just like that, you did. I'm awfully sorry to disappoint you, You sir. are disappointing me. Do you know why? No. Because this man was not only an anarchist, he was also a railway man. Now, what does that... What does that mean to you? Hmm? I don't know, sir. Well, think. Didn't you have a little...
train set when you were in Nepal? Yes, I did. You did? I did, yes. A clockwork one? Clockwork armoured train. Oh, yes. how appropriate, eh? Made real smoke. Did it? It did. Tell me, Inspector. Oh. Did it sort of go... Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> go, on, go on, how did it go? Good, good. Come on, come on. Go on, do it again. I had one too. Well, superintendent, you old sly boots, you. Come on, let's hear yours. Very well. Very well. Here we go. for this poor railway man, bound forever in your subconscious minds to the little train sets of your childhood. I'm more than certain he gave his little cheeks a pat. You know, I saw that as well, sir. There you are, you see, and you said, there, there, my lad, don't take it like that. And you called him by his Christian name. I certainly did not. Don't make me lose my temper. Oh, yes, I did. Right, right, let's get this down one for one. No, yes, sir. He said, hmm? come along now, my lad. Come along now, my lad. Don't take it like that. Don't take it like that. And then we began to sing. And then we began to... You began to sing? All of you. Sing? Makes sense, doesn't it, Superintendent? I mean, having created such a cosy atmosphere, what else would you do but sing? But, Your Honor, we can't possibly go along with that. Then don't! There's the window. It's the only viable alternative. No. Nobody believes a word you have said about this incident. Do you know why? Because besides being evident garbage, your stories lack the tiniest vestige of humanity. There's no warmth. There's no laughter. There's no pain. There's no remorse. Sing. Show a human heart. Beating <laughs> beyond the sordid tangle of la... Sorry. Lies you have left in your wake. For God's sake, give the public something to believe in. Poor railway man. Poor, poor, pathetic railway man. Rami You know it, huh? Yeah. The song of anarchy itself. What could be more suitable? Our homeland is the whole world. Our law is liberty. We have but one thought. Revolution is in our hearts. Happier. He was serene. He was serene. 
Good. No raptors. Not a whisper. Not a whisper. No, 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 no. Oh, that was later. Yeah. <laughs> At midnight. Ah, <laughs> splendid. So now it's midnight. Oh. Come on, it's midnight. Come on, come on, constable. Camera number two. Yes. What? Come along, constable. Set the scene. Go get him, constable. Is this working, Chess? Yes. Yeah. Horrible wallpaper. <laughs> right, uh, set the scene. It's midnight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uncle. Okay. Bit of atmosphere. This is mime. <laughs> Dong. <laughs> Dong. But this could take a little while. <laughs> Dong. <laughs> Dong. The bell. The bell. Dong. <laughs> Here you go. National health after Thatcher. All right. Oh, hey. I need everybody to Thank you very much. What's that? The scene is set. Right. There are four of us in this room. Yes. Myself, the suspect, and, and I just, just left the room. <laughs> these two. Yes, sir. And what were they doing? Interrogating the suspect, sir. Still, after all these hours, they must be knackered. Well, oh, just a bit. Bet you fancied roughing him up a bit, eh? Never got near the bastard. Very even tempered the whole proceeding. Don't get me wrong. Just a little slap. Across the chops. Sir. Never touched him. I know. How about a bit of massage? <laughs> Relieve his tensions. Shoulders full of full of cramps after all those hours of questioning. <laughs> oh my god. It's lovely, that's it. <laughs> left a bit. Left a bit? Yeah. Oh. How's that? Oh, that's quite oh, nice. Left down a bit. A little dibbly do for oh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that a dibbly do, oh. dibbly do, dibbly do? <laughs> yeah. And then a little. No, no massage, no karate, nothing like that. Everything was above board. According to regulations, we were uh, conducting our inquiry in a very uh, light-hearted manner. You were interrogating him. Light-heartedly. <laughs> we were having a bit of a laugh with him. <laughs> I see. Grandmother's footsteps, was it? <laughs> Paper hats. No, sir, no, 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 no. It's just the old joke. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I mean, you ought to see the inspector over there, so when he gets going, my God, he's hilarious. <laughs> well, stroll on, you know. This explains an enormous amount that's often been worrying me these days. I must tell you this, Inspector. I was... I've just moved into a new apartment, you see, in town, and it happens to be right next to a police station. Well, since I moved in there, I haven't got a wink of sleep. Not a wink, do you? For all the screams and the shrieks and the slaps and the thuds. Naturally, I've assumed, as any ill-informed citizen would do, that these are the sounds of suspects being oh. beaten under interrogation. All too clearly, I realise how mistaken my impressions were. Oh. The screams I hear, they're screams of laughter, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those shrieks are shrieks of merriment and mirth, yeah. <laughs> accompanied by Thigh slapping convulsion, yeah, yeah. humorous hysteria. Oh, don't tell me that one, officer. No, no, no please don't. No, you know, I can't take it. No, no, officer, don't. <laughs> oh, what a punchline! Oh, no, I don't. Hold on a shaggy dog story. Sarge, please, no, don't. Mo suddenly dress themselves up as anarchists and revolutionaries and go on demonstrations. They're perfectly innocent. <laughs> they just want to get themselves arrested so they can have a fucking good laugh for once in their life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. 
I don't understand. You said you'd help us. We sang. Yes, we sang. We showed you how warm and human we are. Ah. Let us come to the essence of the problem. The suspect's leap. Right. Right? Ah. Right. Our suspect seized by some psychological crisis or another, suddenly he jumps up, he runs across to the window. Who gave my leg up? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, over the stubble into the void. A bit of a jump that, you need a good run at that, wouldn't you? Your Honour, it's surely not Springboard handy, was there? Little baby trampoline, something of that ilk. You're at it again. Just sifting the evidence? Consider, here is a man of five foot four on his own, that stepladder, springboard, baby trampoline, rye nylon mountaineering ropes with crampons attached, any other device. He manages to get from here to there, and in three seconds he is jam sponge. And there are three highly trained policemen just standing there. Come along, gentlemen, look at the room. One of you must have been in the vicinity of the window. Oh, no, sir, no, it was all, all happened very quickly, you see. Yeah. Yes, he was very athletic, uh, very fast. I see. Uh, I only just managed to grab him by the foot. Aha! My tenacity pays off, you see. You grabbed him by the foot. Uh, yes, sir. You tried to save him. Yes, sir, and his shoe just came off in my hand. <laughs> you had his shoe in your greasy little mitt. <laughs> yes, sir. You beauty constable. Don't you see, gentlemen? Proof positive of your efforts to save the suspect? Yes, naturally. Of course. Yes, yes, yes. Well, yes. 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 I beg your pardon? The uh, suicidal railway man. You'll see if by chance the bugger has got three feet while we're home and dry. <laughs> temper, temper. You see, it states here in the report that the constable had said, as he has just done, that he had the suspect's shoe in his hand. Oh. However, according to this addendum on page 222, four witnesses in the courtyard below, including a journalist from Corriere de la Sera, swear that the uh, jam sponge was accoutred with a pair of shoes consistent with your average biped. Well, uh, that's a funny business. To be sure. I don't know how that happened. Perhaps the constable here, yes, sir. moving like the clappers, yes. had time to belt down to the balcony a few floors below, lean out and slip the shoe back on as the suspect came flying by. Oh, sweat. You explain it. Very well. Obviously, one of the suspect's shoes was too big for him. So, not having a, an insole to hand, he had previously slipped a smaller shoe on inside the big one, which came off in the constable's hand. <laughs> or, one foot being considerably smaller than the other, same means was employed. To even up the feet. <laughs> For cosmetic reasons. <laughs> Two shoes on one foot. Precisely. That is not as mad as it sounds. It's fucking deranged. No, no, no. <laughs> bear with me, sir. Bear with me. What I'm saying is what I held in my hand may, in fact, have been a galosh. Nobody wears galoshes these days. No, it wasn't raining. No, but the suspect might have thought that it was about to. A galosh is a ridiculous garment. An anarchist wouldn't be seen dead in one. Mm. Exactly, sir. <laughs> Bloody balls, Constable. No, I was only trying to help. Cock. Complete cock. Now, these anarchists, sir, they're frequently very eccentric. He may well have been wearing an old rubber galosh. Whoa! 
where is it? Where is the fucking loss? Not in a transcript. Not amongst the dead man's possessions. The shoe he held in his hand was a shoe. The shoe which you placed there secretly after we'd first given evidence. Shoes? I will not. Shoes? Look, 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 look. There's its little tag. Item 99B. Mm. One shoe. Mm. Not the loss. Uh. Billhead. Mm. Whose writing is that? I was following your orders. Me? Me or you won't involve all of a sudden. Please, sir. Keep out of it, will you? <laughs> it's all me now, is it? You didn't enjoy yourself, I suppose! I was having a laugh. Yes. You said that, didn't you, Constable? Laugh? Some laugh, eh? <laughs> Laughing now, aren't we? Well, I was only scaring him. You're the bloody nutter. I'm the nutter! Well, you bloody pushed him, chum! Did I? Did I have a little laugh, all right? <laughs> all on my own, was I? Better answer that, hadn't you? Uh, you never heard a word, Superintendent. See? <coughs> See? Okay? No. Momento. There's a journalist downstairs. He wants to see you. Oh, my God. It's that Falletti woman from Lunita. No, Maria Falletti. City Hall ordered me to see her to try and quieten her down. I've read her stuff. She's a bloody viper. You better get her up here. We don't want to put her back up any worse. You could wait in my office. We'll get rid of her as quickly as possible. Well, I'm fine right here. If she finds out why his honor's here, it'll ruin everything. On the other hand, the judge's quick thinking could prove an invaluable asset if she starts to sling loaded questions. But the main thing is we're not compromised. Constable! Look, clear that stuff up out there. Yes, sir. You tip me the wink and I'll stick my oar in, Superintendent. You're too kind, Your Honor. You see, one Your Honor and we're done for. Excuse me, sir. Couldn't His Honor pretend to be somebody else? Wonderful idea. What? I know. Captain Rossetti, a friend of mine in forensics from Rome. Terrific. Can you bluff your way in forensics? No problem. I'll need a disguise, of course. Can't work without costume. Oh, dear. Don't worry. I have everything I need right here. Tell them to send her up. OK. Send her up. Constable. Sir. Meet her from the left. I'll quicker. just change in here. You don't know how much we appreciate this. You'll never let it be said, Superintendent, that I would abandon my friends in their hour of need. Oh. Ah. See you later. That man is a genius. Well, I'm not at all sure about this. Maria Folletti, sir. <laughs> Miss Folletti. Delighted to meet you. I'm the superintendent. Allow me to introduce my colleague, Inspector Piss Annie. <laughs> In charge of this department. Pleased to meet you. The pleasure's all mine. Do sit down. Thank you. I shan't beat around the bush. As you may be aware, my paper has been less than enthusiastic about the flagrant public whitewashing given to recent events in this building by the city coroner's office. That may be because your paper prefers to deal in rumor rather than fact, if I may say so without being personal, Miss Folletti. <laughs> Even so, I have read your articles with interest. You have struck me as a woman of great courage, a true Democrat, a lover of justice. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> I'd like to begin by asking the inspector a couple of questions. Certainly. 
Why do people call you the window straddler? <laughs> I beg your pardon. This is a copy of a letter written by a young student now in San Vittore prison. The inspector on the fifth floor forced me to sit on the windowsill with my legs hanging out. Throw yourself out, he said. Jump, go on, or haven't you got the guts? I resent this. I trust you don't attach more importance to the words of a condemned man than to those of a police officer. Superintendent! Ah! Perhaps you'll allow my colleague to join us, a forensic expert from Rome. Come in! Captain Rossetti, allow me to introduce my new... <laughs> Delighted. Uh, do pardon the stiff hand. It's wooden. <laughs> General Belgrano. <laughs> Nasty business, still waiting for them to hold a public inquiry, you know. Who do you think you are, Arthur Negus? <laughs> uh, do take a seat, young lady. Right, no smoking, please. Lots of dry wood around here. I'll just uh, park me old timbers over here, and you'll get stuck in. What's the subject? Window straddling. Splendid. <laughs> According to the evidence of the emergency services, a call was registered from the switchboard of this building on the night of the alleged suicide at 2 minutes 2.12. Now, the call was a request for ambulance services, but witnesses to the suicide all agree it took place at 3 minutes past 12. Can you explain this? Oh, it's a crime to be prudent and show a bit of foresight now, is it? <laughs> you see, we often call an ambulance on the off chance. Anyway, the clock which registered our call in the hospital was probably slow. More than likely. Extraordinary. Why extraordinary, madam? This isn't Switzerland, you know. <laughs> we set our clocks as we bloody well fancy here. Yeah? <laughs> we are Italian. Well said, Captain. Ooh, mind the eye. Aye. It's glass. You'll knock it out. <laughs> Just what are you driving at, Miss Folletti? Among the documents of the inquiry produced by the coroner, there is no sign of any expert analysis of the parabola of the four. Parabola? Parabola. Parabola. Ah. In other words, did the anarchist pass through the window with a voluntary movement, thus clearing the side of the building, or did he, as appears, slide down the wall, sustaining fractures and lesions consistent with an inanimate object? Were the suicide's hands injured in such a way as to indicate he put them out to protect himself instinctively at the moment of impact? All this would indicate whether he was conscious or not. I think I ought to point out here, madam, that we are dealing with a case of suicide, you know. The bastard wanted to die, so why the bloody hell would he put his hands out? <laughs> Splendidly answered! <laughs> Mind the eye! If the suspect was unconscious, it would certainly explain the bruises seen on his neck. I advise you against careless talk, young lady. Is that a threat? Not at all, not at all. No, you'll see. There were indeed bruises on the young man's neck. These were caused during the final interrogation just towards midnight. What? One of the police officers, I'm afraid, became slightly impatient and he struck the suspect a rather nasty blow to the nape of the neck. What? Oh. Regrettable, but true. Have you gone mad? Sixteen times, precisely. <laughs> the blow caused partial paralysis, and the suspect had momentary difficulty in breathing. An ambulance was called immediately. At the same time, two officers assisted the suspect to the open window here, supporting him as he leant out to breathe in a few reviving gulps of cold night air. Now, as is often the case in such events, Miss Folletti, each of the officers thought the other had the stronger hold. You know the sort of thing. To me, Giacomo, OK, Batista, whoops a daisy out he goes. <laughs> what more can one say? Brilliant! Superb! So simple! Classic! Well said! Oh, oh. That's it. Sod it! I told you it's gone. What? The eye's out. Everybody down. A very clever account, Captain. It's not bad, eh? It certainly explains the strange terminology employed by the coroner's court. What strange terminology? Do try to be more precise, madam. Have you found it yet? What colour is it? It's see-through, you dumbo. It's an eye. Come in. Oh. Ah! Boccaccio! Ah! Sorry, am I interrupting? I came to deliver this. What is it? My nose. No, it's a reproduction of the bomb planted in the airline office. Splendid. Stick it on the desk, will you? Yes. Oh! Hey! How's that? Got it. What the hell was that? My yeah. eye. This yours? Yeah! Oh, don't be alarmed. No detonator. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, look what a mess you've made of my eye. Constable, could you get me a glass of water to wash it in, please? Sir? Your face looks very familiar. Oh, that'll be because we've both got bandaged eyes. Ah, ah. <laughs> Inspector Batoccio, allow me to introduce Captain Rossetti of the Forensic Department. Rossetti? That's impossible. I know Captain Rossetti. Ah. No, you don't. You! You kicked me! 
You're assaulting me again! Why? That's quite enough. I want to know why you punched me in the eye. He didn't punch you, he kicked you. The insults and the raspberry. What's raspberry? That's enough. My mind's reeling. Can't you see we have visitors? That is not Captain. Oh. Rosetti. Oh. Got it. No! Oh. Rosetti. Your water, sir. Thank you, Constable. And this is Miss Folletti. We'll explain later. Miss Folletti is a journalist. Understand now? No. Ah. She's come here for a very important interview. Ah. See? No. Ah. Ah. Hello! How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'll swallow the eye. <laughs> Inspector Potato is our explosives and ballistics expert. Oh, really? Do you think it'll see me through the night? Oh. <laughs> I wonder if I could ask the inspector a couple of questions. Of course. You say this is a reproduction of the bomb used at the airline office? Based on fragments of the original. Ah, so although it's a real bomb, it doesn't reveal the same information about its makers as the original bomb would have. True. Mm. But wasn't the bomb at the airline office recovered unexploded? Uh, <laughs> yes. In fact, it was an officer from this building who exploded the device within minutes of its discovery, was it not? Uh, I don't understand. Perhaps you'll allow me a word here, Inspector Patozzo, in my capacity as chief of the forensics department. You do know what you're doing with that, don't you? No, I haven't the foggiest idea. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see here, Mr. Folletti, this bomb is highly complex. Now, uh, this here could be a timing device, priming device, double timing priming device, some sort of acid booby trap we just don't know. You see, there you are, merrily taking it to bits and boom. <laughs> Off go you and the evidence. Not worth the risk, really, is it? Utterly convincing. Well, I'm convinced, so am I. I've even convinced myself. Not bad, eh? Sir, <laughs> the bomb may have been booby-trapped. Indeed. A sophisticated bomb. Obviously the work of a professional. A military man, perhaps? More than likely. Ah! <laughs> you admit these bombs require military skill to assemble. So why, Superintendent, do you persist in concentrating your entire efforts on the most pathetic and disorganised group of anarchists in Italy? Pathetic they may look, but that disorganisation is only a cunning facade. <laughs> and what do we find behind this cunning facade, Inspector? Uh... I'll tell you. A group of ten. One who is now dead, another under arrest in Rome, a third an informer paid by this office, a detective from the drug squad, and a well-known ex-paratroop member of the fascist MSI, clearly seen in these photographs going in and out of this very building. Oh, well said, Miss Folletti. Admit it, Superintendent. She has drawn blood. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Your hand! Keep it. I've got a spare. I know him, I tell you. I know him. So do we. Oh. It's a woman! It's unisex. <laughs> this woman is getting out of hand. <laughs> There have been 173 dynamite attacks in the last 14 months. That's 12 a month, one every three days. It has been proved that 150 of these were the work of known fascists. Would you agree with those figures, Superintendent? Sound a little exaggerated to me, but... But basically correct. Maybe. We can have them checked out. What are you hoping to achieve by these rather provocative tactics, Miss Folletti? Viper. Are you trying to get us to admit that decent police officers are conspiring with paramilitary fascist organisations to perpetrate atrocities? It's just his technique. Jesuit dialectics. Are you suggesting that government <laughs> ministers, members of the judiciary, perhaps even Mother Church are accessories to terrorism. Has he gone mad? Mad? That the arming and training of fascist bands is financed by the Greek junta mm. and top industrialists in Italy and Spain? Mad? Yes, Miss Folletti, why not bring some real pus to the surface? What? Mad! It's him! It's that maniac! He's in disguise! So what's new? He's a madman! You're a madman! You are a journalist for the biggest Communist Party paper in Europe, Miss Folletti. Naturally, you want to use your pen to lance the public boil, but what will you achieve? A huge scandal? A heap of big knobs shunted off into retirement. Well, that wouldn't be a bad day's work. But what happens? The party gets a pat on the back, the state remains, and it's business as usual. <laughs> Look, see, he's got an eye, fuck it. Of course he's got a fucking eye. He's got two. Well, that's the normal number, isn't it? Why was he wearing an eye patch if he's got a bloody eye then? For amusement. There you are. For amusement, see? Ha, ha, fucking ha, eh? He is not Dino! Where were we? Scandal. Ah, yes, the people want truth, so offer them scandal. The people want jobs, houses, health. The economic system can't provide, so offer the people reforms. <laughs> The state goes on like Old Man River, still presenting corruption as the exception to the rule when the system the state was designed to protect is corruption itself. Corruption is the rule. You give us a fuck, and I let you off. Just who exactly are you? Exactly. Look! It's his leg! It's false! 
false. Of course it's false. It's a false leg. It's a false, false leg. Just what is going on here? I do apologise, Miss Felicity, but the inspector's mordant epilepsy appears to have taken a turn for the worst. I am not an epileptic. That man is an imposter. He is not... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm no longer responsible. Oh, right, miss, give me the honour of handcuffing this lot. Over there, you two, to the pillar. What? Move. All right. Move. All right, right. Move. All right. right. calm right. down. Right. You, over there. Right. You asshole. <laughs> You'll do me the honour of telling these people exactly who you are. With the greatest of pleasure. That's it. Oh, Show them all the documents, all the records from the psychiatric clinic. You see, 50 years ago, Miss Folletti, the workers of Europe wanted a revolution. What did they get instead? They got depression. They got war. They got a smothering dose of reforms and an avalanche of promises. Subject to paranoid fits. Psychiatric hospitals of Imola. For Gerhard. Oh, you see? Scandal. People love it. It's like the smell of your own shit. He's a lunatic. Exactly. You mean a mental case came in here? Passed himself off as a judge! Reopened the inquiry! Made me sick! Yes, he's a nutcase! A maniac! When I think of what he put me through! Nothing! To what I'm going to put you through now. It's all me now, is it? You didn't enjoy yourself, I suppose! I was having a laugh! Yes, we said that, didn't we, Constable? Some laugh, eh? <laughs> Laughing now, aren't we? Well, I was only scaring him. You're the bloody nutter! I'm the nutter! Well, well, you bloody pushed him, chum! Did I? Did I? Oh, that is all my own! All my own, what I? Everything's on there. Inglorious Dolby Mono. Everything you said since I first came in. It's you. You know him? Yes. Paolo Davidovich Gandolfo. No! Rose Pimpernel of the Permanent Revolution. <sighs> the notorious Trotskyite sports editor of Lotta Continua. The gun, Bartaccio. Use the gun! I wouldn't! Oh, God, no. Don't be fooled, Bartaccio. I can't go off. I only need half a finger to flick this detonator. There is no detonator. You want to bet. <laughs> <laughs> A Krupp's gyroscopic agitator. No, sir. Krupp's gyroscopic agitator. Where did that come from? I always keep a few knick-knacks handy. Put the tape recorder on the desk. Get the gun. Join your colleagues. What are you going to do with that tape? Make a few hundred copies. Spread them around. Plenty of scandal, Miss Folletti. You ought to be pleased. You lot won't be around to see it, of course. What do you mean? Uh, keys, please, Miss Folletti. Both of them. Every copper in Milan will have orders to shoot me on sight. I need a good start. Thank you. What are you doing? This bomb will explode in five minutes precisely. No! Yes. Help! Well, you're a madman! Exactly. You can't intend to commit slaughter in cold blood. Why ever not? Do you think they wouldn't have an even look at them, Miss Folletti? The children of Hitler and Mussolini. <laughs> Same breed as the Pinochets of today. You can't take the law into your own hands. Do I have a choice? Justice must be administered openly through the courts. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's a nice idea, isn't it? <laughs> you kill them and you're no better than they are. You just demonstrate your extremist contempt for democracy. Well said, Miss Folletti. Help! What sort of democracy requires the services of scum like these? I'll tell you, Miss Folletti. A bourgeois democracy, which wears a thin skin of human rights to keep out the cold. But when things hot up, when the rotten plots of the ruling class have failed to silence our demands, when they put half the population on the door, Queue and squeeze the other half dry with wage cuts to keep themselves in profit when they have run out of promises and you reformists have failed to keep the masses in order for them and there are riots on the streets then they shed their skins and they dump you don't they just as they did in Chile and they set their wildest dogs loose on us all for God's sake are you both crazy there's only three minutes left and you start having a political debate Help, Mr. Letty. what has the tragedy in Chile got to do with all this it's hmm? a prize example of the failure of the peaceful road to socialism oh fucking hell <laughs> you know the absurd idea that bourgeois democracy can be gradually transformed from within rubbish Help. Allende's failure proves exactly the opposite he tried to force the pace of the revolution Revolution before the people were fully prepared. For God's sake! Two minutes! You mean he disarmed the workers too fast and led them like the Pied Piper into Santiago Stadium? 
Look at them, Miss Valetti, the political police armed against the people. You seriously suppose you can disarm them with a ballot box? What the hell do you think they're there for? Rubbish! Jesus! You're an extremist, a hooligan, a fanatic. I shan't allow you to go through with this outrage. Bravo! You'll have to kill me too. One minute. You got the stomach for that, hmm? No. Have you got the stomach for this? The keys to the handcuffs. I'm off. You can't chuck the bomb out of the window. Public street. So release them. Write a story. The evidence dies with me. These four will undoubtedly be acquitted. Don't release them. You join the ranks of the dreaded extremists. It's all yours, Miss Valetti. She has to decide, you see. Some of these questions just can't be resolved gradually. So let's see what she decides. is British television. We are obliged to show you both sides of the argument. Maria Faletti is a decent woman. She would ensure that the rule of law prevails. She knows. She knows everything. She was such a lovely woman. Could it be that there is only one answer? <laughs> Good night. <laughs>